time used to breathe, but then we turned it into sand, into a commodity, something that can be spent, wasted, served. We shackle our wrists with it, and that is why I think this is the best, most useful sundial ever invented. It was designed by Richard Schmoyer in the 1950s, and with the cooperation of his family, there is a new and updated model in the next curiosity box. Unlike most sundials, it doesn't tell solar time. It tells civil time, the time found on phones, watches, and clocks, the time your boss and your friends expect you to live by. Most sundials don't do that, because about 200 years ago, we officially abandoned time as they know it. A day for a sundial is based on the idea that the meridian pointing at the sun is a kind of finish line, and the time it takes for your meridian to leave that line and then come back is one solar day. The length of this race changes every day, because the Earth doesn't just turn in front of the sun, it simultaneously orbits around it. Oh, you might think the day is done, but while you were turning, the Earth orbited a little bit and dragged the finish line further east, so you've got longer to go. How much more you have to turn is different every day, and there are two reasons for that. First, the Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical, and when it's closer to the sun every January, it orbits faster, dragging the finish line further ahead than it does in July, when the orbit is further and slower. When its orbit is faster, the journey to tomorrow winds up being longer. Secondly, the Earth's axis is tilted, and like a gyroscope, it maintains its orientation. In the winter and summer, when the equator is tilted away from the sun, the finish line is dragged by Earth's orbital motion mainly to the east, maximally extending the race. But in the spring and fall, when the equator is pointed at the sun, the finish line is dragged more northeast or southeast, making the eastern component smaller, meaning you reach the end of the day sooner than you did in the summer or winter. Sundials follow these natural fluctuations in day length, so compared to the time we use today where every day is exactly the same length, they fall ahead and behind throughout the year. Now, early clocks were built to correct themselves and show the time of the sun, but then the railroads happened, and suddenly bodies and information traveled so widely and so quickly the time of nature wasn't enough anymore. And ever since then, time has been squeezed into tiny boxes made of ticky-tacky that all look just the same. To convert between the two, many sundials come with an equation of time plaque. Simply read what time the sun says it is, and then account for daylight savings and time zones, find the date, and add or subtract the corresponding number of minutes to find what time we say it is. But this sundial requires none of that. It accounts for time zones and daylight savings, and Schmoyer's unique Noman design automatically adjusts for the equation of time. It is a bridge between what we are and what we think we are. It takes a bit of work to build and use this sundial, but that work makes you appreciate what we've done. With this sundial, like Dr. Frankenstein himself, you won't be late, and you'll get to create the monster yourself.